uh, three major movements or shifts within Global Mission that I see transpiring over the last few years. And they all in involve movement. The first is the movement of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, we're seeing the presence of the Holy Spirit move in ways uh, across the globe where you know, before we emphasized the sharing of the overt message of Christ, now we're seeing the Holy Spirit move into areas where missionaries are not yet located and the, the, uh, the soil is being um, turned over, the soil is being prepared, uh, the, the Spirit is moving in ways that we did not expect, opening up the hearts of people that have been closed off or separated from the overt gospel message. And we're finding missionaries moving into places that are already ready to hear the gospel, already ready to begin sending missionaries. In fact, uh, we ran into a situation a few years ago. We were in West Africa, arrived in a country to do, uh, to begin some, to, well, to continue some work, and some missionaries were leaving. Some of the studies had said that it was a reached country. Well, what we found in the, the, the next four years was that they were reached with the gospel, but they were not yet ready to fully be self-theologizing, self-perpetuating. And this church was ready to send missionaries itself. And so within four years, they did and began planting churches in the surrounding uh, countries and, and in the multiple language groups that had not yet heard the gospel. And so we're seeing the movement of the Holy Spirit. We're also seeing the movement of people. I think we're probably seeing this most uh, drastically in the movement of people from the Middle East into Southern Europe. But, you know, we're seeing a transient society occur around the globe. Um, movement from, from India to Africa, from Africa to Europe, from Brazil to the rest of the world, <laughs> from Central America, northward and southward. And I think we just, we just, we're seeing this, this mixture of, of cultures in a way I don't think we ever have before. Now, in many ways, media has kind of prepped us, you know, the, the sharing of, of movies from the West to the rest of the world. Now we're seeing uh, popular media being shared from other parts of the world uh, with the West. And we're seeing these cultures uh, mixing and, and colliding in many ways, in a way that we haven't seen before. And so people might be working at what they consider to be their homeland or their home country, but engaging with cultures much different than they've ever experienced before. And that's not just something that's taking place in the West, but all around the world. And it's something that we're going to see as a major need in terms of educational preparation of those serving in ministry, as well as those Christians serving in a variety of, of other contexts and careers. And the third major shift, I believe, and it kind of related to all of these, is the uh, growth of, of of pluralistic, technologically advanced societies in which Christianity is a marginal feature of that society. Uh, we're used to, I think, in the United States, right, or even in Western Europe, where with the growth of this technology, with, with the, the growth of society, there's been kind of a an outer shell, like almost a protective shell of the Judeo-Christian ethic this isn't present in all countries, in all places, in all cultures around the world. And I, you know, I, I think we're going to see Christianity become a prophetic minority voice. And I think we're going to learn from history, from those who were also minority voices, uh, in, from African Americans, the context of the United States, uh, we are going to learn from their history of how to be a prophetic voice as a minority culture and as a minority religious voice in these cultures. And I think these are three major shifts within global missions that we'll have to deal with. The movement of the Holy Spirit, the movement of people, and the movement toward a, 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 a leveling of an ethic where Judeo-Christian faith and tradition will not be the predominant uh, structure of the society and Christianity will definitely be a minority voice, and so it'll have to pick up its prophetic task in order to be that. <laughs>